Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back, people, 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 people. You know who it is, Arsenio Buck reporting live from Bangkok. Welcome back to the Arsenio Buck Show, people. So today is about telling uh, the truth. How often, <laughs> listen, how often do we, listen, I'm going to try to keep this as clean as possible. People don't like the truth. Okay, and you know what? I've gotten in trouble a lot and a plenty of times throughout my uh, throughout my life because I told the truth, you know. And you know, it was the first time I actually saw someone tell the truth like blatantly and ignorantly was uh, was in class. I was actually in class with my brother, and there was this guy that had a unbelievable. I mean, attention disorder on top of attention disorder. He needed so much attention, the attention that he probably wasn't getting at home. And my brother literally went off on him. I'm like, holy Jesus. Like, he just started screaming. My brother just started screaming. He was like, you know what? Nobody likes you. Why do you keep trying to do this and do that? And it's funny because the teacher was kind of looking at me and saying, hey, that's your brother. Calm him down. And I was like, all right, Steven. And, and, and it's funny because the guy is like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And after that, he changed forever and we never saw him again. It was the funniest thing ever. But it was the most <laughs> – my brother had enough of this guy. I was in 10th grade. My brother was a senior. And, oh, my God, my brother just let him have it. He told him the truth, the truth that he needed to hear. Now, the thing is a lot of people need to hear the truth. And I love it because one of my trainers – my trainers from seven years ago, big old Leslie Brown. Uh, I still remember he was telling me something about one of his clients, and he was like, well, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to sugarcoat it for you? No, I'm going to tell you what's going on right now. You're lazy. Guys, I mean, I'm just going to – I just tell the truth, and a lot of people the, – the truth, if you tell the truth, it sets you free. I'm telling you. And you know what's crazy? You get in trouble for telling the truth. For example – a lot of people would say, hey, uh, I don't like the way you talk about Thai women. It's not right. And I'm like, I'm not saying anything bad about Thai women. I'm talking about the experiences and what I've witnessed with my own eyes. And what have I witnessed? If you ask me what I've witnessed, well, over the course of three years, I've witnessed that more, you know, a lot, a lot of Thai women are predisposed to white men. That's it. That's the truth. That's, that's all it is. It's the truth. There's nothing. I'm not saying, oh, Thai women are a bunch of racist beasts. No, I never said that. I said they're more predisposed to white men, just as Japan is, just as Korea is, just as Cambodia is, just as the Philippines are, just as Indonesia. They're all the same. Asia, that's just how it is in Asia. But if an African-American or African were to go to South America, the women would be more predisposed to them rather than white men. I mean, that's just how it is, man. So, listen, a lot of people don't like that, and I hear you, and I, I, I understand. Well, you know what? You can turn it off. You can turn off the podcast, baby. I'm just telling the truth. Like, a lot of things, a lot of other guys don't like me telling the truth. Like, if I say, okay, today I was walking uh, downstairs in Krispy Kreme of a major shopping center, and I saw a 60-year-old man walking with a 20-year-old girl that had 10-inch, 10-inch heels, now, if I say that, oh, I'm the bad guy, I'm, I'm stereotyping. What are you talking about? I'm telling you what I've seen with my own eyes. That's all I'm saying. I tell the truth. Okay, what do you want me to say? Well, I saw, I saw a guy walking with another woman, and there was, a, there was a major age difference. Hell no, I'm not saying that. I'm telling you what I see with my own eyes. And you know what? A lot of people can't take the truth, and it does... It does end up getting you in, uh, I guess you could say, in trouble and whatnot. But listen, it's none of my business what other people come to this country for. I'm just telling you what I've seen with my own eyes, and it's actually going to be written in a book very soon. So stay tuned for that, because that's going to, I guess, reveal a lot of hard truths. Okay, so a lot of people say, you know what, uh, telling the truth, we avoid doing it just because we're uncomfortable. A lot of people are just uncomfortable or they're afraid of the consequences. Well, I'm not afraid of the consequences. That's why I do this podcast. How about that? Yes, I do this podcast to tell the truth. And if you don't like it, turn off the damn podcast. Hell, I've been I've I've almost been uh, throughout my career. I've all I've been blackmailed. I've been scrutinized. I've been so many other different, you know, a lot of different things. Right. But the whole point about this is telling everybody how 
I consistently and persistently continue to grow and continue to go after opportunities in a very, 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 extremely, very, 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 very difficult environment here in Thailand. That's all. So the thing is, I mean, honestly, a lot of people say, well, you know, it's great because uh, I actually had uh, one of my best friends. She actually uh, messaged me yesterday. She was telling me a situation she was having with one of her, I guess you could say, one of her friends, right? And it's crazy because if she, the situation wouldn't have escalated, uh, well, escalated it into what it is today if it wasn't for her just sitting down and face, I guess, facing what wasn't working back then. You see what I mean? If she would have just went there and, and sat this particular person down and say, listen, I see this, this, this happening, this, this, this. I'm going to actually reveal some of the techniques in terms of how you can hit it straight on. But she didn't do that. And now it escalated into a very, very ugly situation, unfortunately. But I gave her some of my uh, my own personal advice. So hopefully everything has turned out well for her. But yeah, we're so we're so keen on uh, hurting other people's feelings and, you know, getting people angry like like, you know, Another situation is, you know, I sent um, I sent a letter to my mother probably three years ago because I heard that I was being talked about through some of my relatives. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to tell her the truth. And then people weren't happy. People were angry. People cried. And for that, I ruined just about every relationship. But you know what? I no longer have to live with that burden saying, oh, man, my family thinks about me this way. But I'm just going to just, you you know, continue to just keep doing what I do. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. I'm going to tell them exactly what I felt the past probably four to five, half decade of my life and how people, a helper tool, no, I don't want a password. It's crazy ass pop-ups. Okay. Uh, And I'm going to tell them exactly where I'm coming from and what I've experienced over the last year living within this household and feeling the animosity and the antagonism or I guess antagonists from other people. So that's what I did, and people weren't happy, and they're still not happy to this day, and so be it. You know, the, the truth hurts. The truth hurts. And some people will say, that's all lies. I'm like, uh, no, it's not. This is all personal experience. I'm telling you exactly. And you remember, you can look back and vividly and reminisce all those times that I've talked about. And they would know exactly what I'm talking about. And such is life, man, you know? And so... And my, if you ask me, you say, well, you, you reference your family a lot. I reference my family a lot just because it is good for a lot of people to listen to my experience and what I have done and what I am doing and what I will do to overcome whatever. You'd say, oh, man, well, family means everything. Absolutely, it does. It does to a lot of other people. The thing is, I haven't had my family ask me any questions about my life the past three years since I've been living here in Thailand. So you would say, wow, Arsenio, well, that, that's your family. Yeah, it is my family. But you know what? When you reach a, a different point in life, it's time for you to create your own family. So it's kind of like in America. If I go to a, an American football game and I see a guy sitting down and he ends up, uh, well, yeah, I ask him. He's like, hey, so how's your family? He's like, yeah, here's my wife. Here are my two kids. I'm not going to ask him about his brother or his mother. It's 11 o'clock. Of course, this always happens. It's 11 o'clock, baby. Anyways, he would say, oh, my my brother, my sister, my, wait, my mother? What? He would be he would be confused. He'd be like, oh, well, my brother lives uh, in the state state side on the other side of the country. Uh, my mother, I talked to her probably a few months ago. It's kind of like a disconnection. It's like when you reach a certain age in your life, it's time for you to create your own family. Now, me, will I ever get a girlfriend? Who the hell knows? But honestly, I am gunning towards all the opportunities that are available for me right now. So do I have place for someone to just come in here? Uh, But the thing is, we have to be on the same wavelengths. I'm not just going to invite someone in who doesn't have any goals in my life. I'm sorry. That's just not what I do. Okay? They need to be exactly, I guess they could say, driven and determined and convicted just like me. If not, you know, what's the point of the whole relationship? You know what I mean? Anyways, guys, enough of my family, enough of everything else, enough of the personal experiences. Let's talk about telling the truth faster. 
So Jack Canfield did a four-day seminar, advanced seminar, uh, on revealing the truth. And he had a group of people, and he had every person individually get up and tell the truth about anything. About anything that has happened or that is happening or that had happened in their life. And so these people would get up and say, you know what, I stole a pencil in the eighth grade. Uh, I stole money from my mother. I did this. I did that. Each person would reveal maybe between three and seven truths. And so by the time this seminar was done, it was amazing because over the next, I guess you could say, few days, lifelong migraines disappeared. Spastic colons relax and medication is no longer needed. Depression lifts and aliveness returns. People actually look younger and more vital. It was amazing. It was amazing. It's crazy because one participant even reported losing five and pow- five pounds of excess weight over the ensuing two days. That's how much shit we have on our shoulders. Five pounds in two days, people. What is that, two, three kilos? In two days, you would say, that's impossible. Honestly, the mind means everything. If you're holding any weight from your past, that's why I love talking about all my experiences because what I've dealt with, not just only here in Thailand or Australia, but in my entire life back in America, I'm able to express and I'm not scared to express or tell anyone my story because it is my story. And so when I tell everyone my story, I'm no longer, I no longer have anything to hide. You see what I mean? No longer have anything to hide. This is an example that tells us it takes a lot of energy to hold back our truth. And that energy, when it's released, can be focused and used on creating greater success in all the areas of our lives. We become less ca- you know, cautious, more spontaneous, more willing to be our natural selves. And when this happens, information that is vital to make things work and to get things done can be shared and acted on. It's crazy. People would look at me and say, are you a teacher? You can't be. Why? Because the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you act. I'm like, uh, and the, what, what, what does that mean? Oh, well, teachers are supposed to be fat. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, teachers are supposed to be white. Uh, no. Teachers are supposed to be this. Teachers are supposed to be 60 years old. Teachers are supposed to be 50 years old. Teachers are supposed to be 40 years old. Teachers are supposed to be... Just too many labels. So when I go running, today I went running this morning, three miles, up to five kilos. When I went running this morning, it was great because a lot of people would say, oh, you're you're not a teacher. I'm like, yes, I am. Oh, my God, really? You're so built. Your physique is amazing to be a teacher. I'm like, "Uh, yeah, and... But, 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 but the majority of the teachers I know, they're all uh, 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 65 and uh, oh, shut up. I don't want to hear it. Those are labels. Stop placing labels on people. I just met a guy, wonderful guy. Uh, he works at a school uh, near me. And this guy is huge. This guy's got huge biceps. And I'm like, damn, I guess I'm not the biggest one here anymore. A uh, wonderful guy right out of New York. And it, it's crazy because... The perception of teachers, I don't know if it's in, like in Korea. Let's talk about Korea. Korea, in order for you to be a teacher in Korea, you have to have blonde hair and you have to have blue eyes, period. There's no and, if, buts, or shoulds, or but anything you want to ask. There's none of that. No coordinating conjunctions here, okay? You literally have to be blonde hair and blue eyes. This is what the students expect. So if you have a black man that walks in, literally this happened. You can, you can see the blog online. This black man walked in his class and all the students started screaming and crying because they didn't see that blonde hair, blonde hair, blue eyed, I guess you could say teacher. See, there's too many labels on how certain, you know, particular people should look. If you look at the majority of teachers here in Thailand, it uh, doesn't matter what race you are. They're all overweight. Oh, is it just Thailand? No. Go to America. The major- well, the majority of Americans are overweight. But a lot of American teachers are overweight. So the perception of a teacher is to be overweight. That's not right. That's labeling. That's labeling. And you know what? When I'm able to not defend anything else that's going on in my life, 
I no longer have to worry about, oh, well, you're not scared to do this. You're not scared to do That's why I created this podcast. And it got me into a lot of ridiculous trouble that it wasn't even trouble, to be honest with you. Uh,